you might have tried cross stitch in the past, but not like this. Christian Dare is here with an incredible DIY. talking about I want you to start by taking a look at this so this is such a beautiful piece of art DIY that you've created I feel like it took you a billion hours but did it it did not it took probably about 10 to 12 okay that's which fair. wasn't terrible it's a good weekend sort of project you Absolutely. can split over two days it's beautiful. Uh, and you're going to show us how you can do this, even if you want to take it a little bit more simple. Yep. Uh, there's certain steps you're going to want to follow, starting with getting this. Yeah. Right? So this pegboard. So pegboard. So my entire project started with, I actually, to be honest with you, I wanted to fill a giant wall yes. with art, but cheaply. Yeah. And this was the trick. Because pegboard, you can We're buy a you. giant four by eight sheet for 25 bucks. Perfect. And yards like four or five dollars a roll. Yeah. So I was basically wandering the aisles of Home Depot and it hit me. I was like, pegboard is basically cross stitch. Because if yeah. you ever cross stitch, it's basically a grid on your fabric, right? So you just can do the same sort of thing. So step one, buy pegboard. Yeah. <laughs> step two, go yes. online and you can find thousands upon thousands of cross stitch patterns. Okay. Now, if you're unsatisfied with what's online sometimes, you can make your own. Which so you I was. filmed that and you thought, I needed to be a little bit it's more. It's a little still grandma for me. Okay. But it makes it really simple. <laughs> it's simple, simple, right? It shows yeah. you every single cross stitch you need to do. Okay. So what you can do instead is find inspiration. So the inspiration shot's actually one of that, sort of that aesthetic of the worn-in antique rug. Yeah. You can see some kind of wear patterns. And that's why I actually kept the pegboard natural. You could paint it out if you wanted to, but I wanted the wear patterns. Okay. So I took this actually to a photocopy shop, blew mm -hmm. it up a little bit. Grab some good old graph paper. Mm -hmm. Stole some kids' pencil crayons. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. And you stick it to a window. Yes. Basically, it's a cheap light box, right? Yes. So you can see right through and you can start making your grid. So then I basically, from that, created a pattern. So look at this. So if you can see the pattern, this is it the basically whole pattern, lines up. Um, of the, which it looks more complicated than it is. If you put that up against a light source, you're going to be able to see where everything should go. Yeah. And now you've got to get this onto here. Yeah. Right? So the trick is when you do your pattern is count out your pegboard and count out your graph paper. And I'll oh, give you a trick. I see. If it's 36 inches by 48 inches, yeah. you actually have 35 squares by 47 squares. It's basically Ooh. one inch less. So tricky. you can do it really quickly, right? Okay. So the first sort of thing is you can start, you need a wool needle. Yep. Which is plastic, it won't stab yourself. Okay. It just makes it much easier <laughs> as you're going through the pegboard. So it's super simple, follow your pattern. Do a couple stitches here for you. A couple of things you need to keep Very in mind simple. when you're doing your stitches. Yeah, so one of the tips that cross stitches will always tell you is make sure you're always going in the same pattern. So if you've started this way and your X is going across over on top, mm -hmm. make sure you always do that or you're going to notice the one spot where you've done it the wrong way. You will if you look it. closely at my board, you may see some also, but I was <laughs> in a bit of a rush. So as you start getting through them all and start doing a row, and say you need to get to the point where you need to switch colors, yeah. a proper cross stitcher actually ties on the new color and goes through. Mm -hmm. I belong to the bad cross stitching club. Mm -hmm. I just cut it yeah. and, and tie on. it to itself and move on. Yeah, that's I'm fine. I'm done with that, right? That's fine. So one thing I will tell you though is if you want to tackle one of these guys, the easiest way to do a giant cross stitch is to grab two sawhorses and lay it on top. Because then you can actually go up and down and sort of through. Oh, I see. But I will warn you, the next day, your thighs and bum might hurt. Because <laughs> you basically realize you spent the entire day doing squats. Squats. So it's crafting and exercise. It's kind of good. You will thank me later for it when you yeah. skip the gym. Now your now, booty will love you. If your home is not sort of set up for the aesthetic of sort of a floral, you can do a text pattern. Right. So it's super, super easy. Um, so I actually just made this sort of... So graph. that says, if you can't read it, today, today I, I slay. slay. And yes, so you do, you Christian use Dare. <laughs> Look at what he made from that. If you, you do it with all? sort That's of square awesome. letters. So think of all the places that this can go in the house. Yeah, it could be great as a headboard. You could actually yes. put it at your front door and put some coat pegs under it. Yeah. So every day when you put on your coat, you're like, that's right, today I slay. That's right. It's like the daily reminder. So if you do it with sort of a square letter, it's much easier. Yes. If you want to do it in cursive, there's actually online sites where you can plug it in and it will translate it to cursive cross stitch for you. Oh, Makes it super, super simple. You can also do your surname, you can do your family's name or your kids' names. I think that's such a I great project. I actually almost did more for you, but I thought today I slay was better. I think today I slay <laughs> is better. I love it.